Welcome back to the expert interview series. And we're back with Dr. Seeds this lovely day. We normally with Dr. Seeds have, you know, scheduled recording times for these types of things. But every so often, Dr. Seeds sends me something and says, we must do an episode now. And when those magical days happen, I know that we're in for something really exciting. So doc, I'm not even going to introduce this because I don't want to do, I want, I want it to be done justice. Let's talk about this. Thanks, Karen. This is just exciting because this is a, this is kind of a, a, uh, a continuation of information that is really, I'm just, I'm using this to really set off our NAD conference in January, just to give people an indication of how important it is to understand not just what NAD is, but the aspects of NAD in combination with other modalities and therapies and the influence you can have on improving the functional status of the cell, in particular the mitochondria. And this is what was exciting. This, this article that came, came out of London. So it's looking at aging. And in particular, it's looking at the aging of the eyes. And when we look at aging of the eyes, we can, we can put this into perspective. In the retina of the eyes, we have more mitochondrial function in the retina of the eyes than we do it anywhere else in the body. So the eyes are the retina area with mitochondrial function is a, is a great area to look at mitochondrial decline or aging because that is, if there's anywhere else in the body, the fastest aging organ, uh, area of the body is the retina in the eye. So knowing that, if we go after, are there modalities and therapeutics that we can use to go after improving mitochondrial function in the retina? And the answer is absolutely. And we've been doing this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this into context of something that's, that's now present. Um, and this has to do with an article that was written uh, based out of London, uh, brilliant work that looked at the week-long improved color vision uh, sensitivity at 670 nanometers of exposure associated with an enhanced mitochondrial function. What does that mean? It means they took red light and they exposed the retina to red light for just three minutes once a week and were able to document improved mitochondrial function in the retina and improved vision um, just with this once a week. And it actually lasted, even lasted a week after, you know, once it was stopped, the retina still showed that, uh, that this, this continued to improve. This is tremendous. This information is tremendous because it, it correlates so many things that we try to put together in cellular medicine and, and in understanding the basics of pathways and what are the important aspects of improving mitochondrial function. At the age of 40, you start to decline with your visual function. Some of the things you start losing first are, are colors um, and enhancement of colors, but you still decline, you still continue to lose other aspects of, of, uh, of vision. But this study was based specifically on improving those increasing efficiencies of, of color. Well, what's really interesting that this study honed in on is that this only happened when they stimulated the retina in the morning and, you, and not in the middle of the day and not at night. And that indicates that mitochondrial function and efficiencies are most influenced in the morning. Why is that? Well, any of you that have been part of the SSRP or a lot of you that have been following the, these type of um, informational podcasts that we've been doing might have an answer in that it re, it, it's specific to circadian rhythms. And you're right. And this is where it gets so awesome and cool. 
because circadian, we've been talking so long about circadian clocks and how circadian clocks are just vital to efficiency of the cell. So they, they proved in this study that this only worked in the morning and it only worked then when the mitochondria would accept this process, okay, of the photomodulation. So just think of it as clock turns on NAD production. So just think of a NAD to ATP. That's an easy way to think of it. So you need this circadian clock. It has, the mechanisms need to be in play for it to be turning on. But you also, you, to optimize this, you need the circadian clock to be on target and in the right place. It's not just, so this study just indicates a little bit of something bigger. It's just important to understand that this NAD component is just as important as this. And when they're together and they're in harmony and working together, you've got, you've got some awesome things happening. At the NAD summit, we're going to be correlating and bringing in real world aspects of what's happening in the current literature what current therapeutics we're using, and we really can take advantage of understanding cell metabolism and make it real. It's a great precursor for this incredible summit that's coming up where you're gonna hear some, some great discussion. Um, you're gonna learn a lot. I'm gonna learn a lot with you. And uh, I'm just excited to be able to bring to you some more information that is, I think, vital to everyone to start looking at why cellular medicine is so important and what we can do with it and how we can translate it into viable options today for every one of you to improve your life. It takes place January 21st through the 22nd in the new year, 2022. It'll be a fantastic two, two and a half days because we're gonna save our third day for all the questions that we're going to get to. Uh, thanks to Dr. Seeds, we have him cornered in Vail, so I know exactly where to find him. Uh, but it'll be two and a half days, amazing lectures, guest speakers. We've got some fantastic PhDs coming. All of Dr. Seeds' colleagues um, and research partners will be there, uh, and we hope to see you there as well. Uh, we hope to see you there virtually. Uh, those tickets are on sale at the link below, and you can always email info at ssrpinstitute.org for any more questions that you may have. Or if you have any questions on this episode, please do let us know. We're happy to um, fill in any blanks that you have have, but otherwise, this is just the start of a lot of fantastic information that we know is going to come out of that conference. Thank you so much, Dr. Seeds, for this emergency filming. And folks, please join us next time. See you in Vail.